Now we're about to establish an important piece of geography and break it completely. We've seen that hallway before, but this time the doorway leads, seems to lead into the kitchen. You see Kevin's modulated sense of concern now growing into, okay, I think I need to run. Hi, I'm Kevin Bacon. And I'm David Kep, uh, the director of You Should Have Left. Uh, and we're here to break down a scene for you. Are you at the corner? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You can let go. This scene we, we picked is about halfway through the movie. The movie takes place at a, a, a rural, a house in rural Wales, very isolated. And uh, Kevin's character and his wife, played by Amanda Seyfried, and their six-year-old daughter uh, have come to this house and started to notice things are a little bit strange about the place. And uh, unfortunately, that's coincided with a, a big, uh, some marital dust up and Amanda's character has left and Kevin's uh, here alone with the kid uh, exploring the place and they've discovered strange things about it. You know, one of the great things that David did when he wrote the script was he had envisioned not a typical scary house, especially in the countryside. You, you know, you really think of like gothic kind of places, ivy covered and you know, creaky old antiques. And, uh, you know, he kind of uh, had, a, had a vision for something modern. And we uh, saw the pictures of this house and it was, it was scary in and of itself because I think both of us felt like, well, this is the place and we don't really have a uh, plan B. So before, if you really fall in love with a location like that um, with, with no other options, that can be a little terrifying when you're making a movie, but luckily uh, we were able to, to shoot there. What does it say? It says this room is five feet longer on the inside than it is on the outside. Wait, how does that work? It doesn't. I'm cold. Get your coat on. Okay. So you can see, um, they're, they're in some really striking uh, uh, countryside. And like, like a lot of scary movies, we picked uh, a place that was very isolated because in that isolation, you know, the, the, a lot of fear can develop. And so what we're working with here is how to play that tension from rising up from not tense at all to a little bit worried to really quite concerned. If you're gonna do a scary movie, then probably your character is gonna be scared for about at least three quarters of the movie. And Hopefully. Yeah, and, and various various versions of that, playing that particular emotion become uh, challenging to try to, you know, just come up with new ways to uh, approach it. And it's the face and it's the body and, and everything. But uh, I find that one of the th fun things about a scene like this is it's it moves from being just kind of um, odd to like weird to really weird, like you said. And so that you, so that it's kind of built in the varying degrees that I, I, I have to, uh, you know, pull out and, and uh, portray. Ella? What we're doing is really trying to ratchet things up slowly. So when uh, the little girl, we get the sense that maybe something is up by her delayed entrance into the kitchen. Uh, and because Kevin starts to become concerned, we start to become concerned, but not too much because then she shows up and there's the friendly little wave. And then we start the dolly across those outdoor windows. And it's really the simplest effect in the world in terms of camera work. What, what we were looking for on this movie was to do things practically as often as possible. So the little girl runs across, her momentum very naturally should carry us out those doors, but we sneak a little cut as we pass the brick there. So we match the speed of the dolly and just jump cut in the brick so you'd never notice. 
and the camera ends up where her body should have ended up out in the hallway, but she does not. Ella. Ella. Something not in the mood for hide and seek. Okay, Ella, it's not funny. Come out, please. Ella? Papa? Where are you? Papa? One of the great accomplishments of our, our uh, production design crew was that we shot a lot of the stuff and all, obviously all the exteriors of the house in Wales, but then moved back to uh, London for a, a few weeks where the where the set had been like perfectly recreated, except for the fact that now things could move and expand and there were some some slight kind of design things that were, were recreated. So when you look at a sequence like that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Dad, but it's, we're, we're cutting back from London to Wales a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. The insides of the house, well, there are a couple different parts of the inside of the house, well, some of it in Wales, some of it in London. Let's watch the rest of the clip and, and, and see things start to really freak out. Ella. Now we're about to establish an important piece of geography and break it completely. We've seen that hallway before. But this time, the doorway leads, seems to lead into the kitchen. You see Kevin's modulated sense of concern now growing into, OK, I think I need to run. Ella! She hadn't have gone into there. Where it takes him now is to a place that is completely freaked out because now he's seen a hallway that the last time he turned around was 10 feet long is probably now 75 feet long. We had endless conversations about tracking exactly where uh, I was emotionally in the course, not only of one sequence like this, which as we mentioned before, jumped from uh, Wales to London and back to Wales and, and, and back and forth, but also in the, in, the, in, the, in the sequence of a movie. The genius of a premise, like a missing kid, and it's not my premise so I can say it's genius, is you cannot leave the house. Your kid is in that house somewhere, so even if this house is behaving uh, like a house from hell and not following the rules of the universe, you can't, there's nothing you can do. You should have left, but it's too late. You can't, now your kid is missing. The sort of granddaddy to, to my mind of Weird House and uh, you know family stories is a Richard Matheson episode of Twilight Zone called Little Girl Lost, uh, which is about a little girl who disappears in a house one night. Um, sort of famously, it was, a, it was a big inspiration for uh, Spielberg's Poltergeist. And Matheson, uh, who wrote the novel, uh, A Stir of Echoes, that the movie Kevin and I did uh, 20 years ago was based on, um, Matheson was a genius at that sort of inventive domestic horror. If you listen to our soundtrack as we're dollying past the living room, just before the little girl disappears, the composer, Jeff Zanelli, put in a little twinkling of bells that evokes the Twilight Zone theme, which was sort of our way of saying, hats off to Matheson. <laughs> 